Hey, in this nugget, we're gonna dig into the pipeline. We'll look at some examples, and more importantly, learn how it works. Into the virtual lab, and into the pipeline we go. Let's begin by bringing up Visual Studio Code and looking at an example of a command that utilizes multiple pipeline operators. Now, the purpose of this command is to return the top five processes on this system by memory that are consuming CPU cycles. Let's break it down. We start here with a get process. This will return all of the processes on our local system here as process objects. We take all of those and we, using the pipeline operator, pipe those objects to our next commandlet, where object, which again, acts like a filter against the objects returned from the previous commandlet. So this will filter out any processes that aren't consuming CPU by saying, only give us the objects from that previous commandlet where the CPU property is greater than zero. Then we pipe all of those to sort object, which will sort it in descending order by working set, which is memory consumption. Then finally, we pipe those to a select object, which will only give us the first five in the results. Let's walk through this command chain step by step to get a visual on how it works. Starting here with get process. I'm just gonna highlight get process and run that line of code. And this will again return every single process on the system, quite a few of them. Now let's highlight our next command along with our first command. Notice the pipeline here in between them to only get processes that are consuming CPU cycles. And if we execute this and scroll up here, you'll notice that the CPU property is greater than zero for all of our results here in the, uh, the second execution, where if we scroll up to our first execution, we have zeros all over the place. Now let's add the third command into the mix along with everything else. This will then sort it by working set, which is memory. And if I scroll up here and find the, uh, <laughs> the property, there it is, the third one is working set memory. So if we highlight this, now it's going to sort it by working set descending. And here's our third results. We can start to see the process is consuming a lot of memory on the system. And finally here, we only wanna see the top five, so we can highlight the entire command and our select object command will only then return the first five out of the pipeline. The pipeline is just simply all about objects, taking the output of one commandlet and passing it as input to another commandlet. But how does it work? Let's take a look. One more quick example before we peer under the covers. Let's actually get a copy of Notepad here up and running. There it is, it's in memory. We can see it down there in the taskbar. Now, if we were to run a get process targeting Notepad, we should get that one result returned as we do. What if we pipe the result of that command over to stop process? What's gonna happen? Keep an eye on notepad down there in the taskbar. It's gone, right? But how did that really work? The magic of the pipeline here in PowerShell is what's known as parameter binding. The pipeline attempted to bind something from that object into a parameter of stop process. And we can actually see this by looking at the parameters for stop process. So we'll run a get help for stop process, show us all of the parameters, and I'll go full screen here so we can actually see it. If we scroll up here, what you're looking for is accept pipeline in input. This attribute gives us all the information we need to know if we can pipe objects to a commandlet. Whenever you see parameters that support pipeline input, like these two guys right here, for example, we can also tell how they accept pipeline input by value or by property name. And you'll also see parameters that support both by value or by property name, which just gives us more options when working with the pipeline. Now by value means essentially by data type. This means that we can pipe, in this case, process objects to this commandlet and they will get bound to this parameter. And this is exactly what we just did. We took process objects from get process and we piped them to stop process. So because those were process objects, they got bound by value to this parameter. I also wanna point out that by value means we can pass in objects that can be converted to whatever data type that parameter supports. The other type we have here is by property name. This just simply means that we can pipe objects that contain a, in this case, name property to this commandlet and it'll get bound to this parameter. Let's hit it home with a few examples. Back to our code, starting here with by value. Now this is the exact same command that we ran in our second example, but now it should make sense. What type of objects does get process return? Process objects, right? And if we pipe those to a stop process, what parameter are they gonna get mapped to? Input object, right? Because it accepts an array of process objects by value. And by the way, we can also just use this parameter directly. And I actually showed you this in a previous nugget, but we could do something like this. I'll create a variable here and set it equal to the result of get process. And now we could just call a stop process. 
passing in that variable here to the input object parameter, and that will give us the exact same results as this line of code, albeit a little bit more code. Before we look at by property name, let me give you one more example here to really hammer it home. What I'm gonna do is use get service here. We're gonna pipe a string value of bits over to get service. And look at that, we get a response. Now let's try that same thing for get process. How about notepad here? We'll pipe notepad over to get process and we get an error. The input object cannot be bound to any parameters for the command. Why did that work for get service but not get process? This is again where the help topics come into play. So I'm gonna run a get help here for get service and we'll just look at the name parameter. Notice that the name parameter accepts both by property name and by value. We just passed in a string by value. We didn't pass in an object that contained a name parameter. So that's why it worked here for get service because that value was bound to this parameter using the pipeline. Now let's also look at help here for that name parameter on get process. Notice that it only accepts it by property name. So that's why it didn't work because it doesn't accept it by value. There are no parameters that accept a string by value, which is why it couldn't find anything to bind to in the pipeline. So the only way PowerShell can bind to this name parameter on both get process and stop process is by property name. Only if you have objects that support that name parameter when you pipe it to it. And here's an example that creates an object on the fly with a single property called name. We store that in a variable and then we pipe that variable containing that object with its one name parameter over to stop process and that's how it would get bound by property name. And here, just to, just to uh, prove that it works here, let's fire up an instance of Notepad. There we go. And now we can highlight these two lines of code that'll create that object, custom object with that name parameter and look at that. Notepad is gone. And that, my friends, is how the pipeline works. It just simply binds objects or properties to the receiving commandless parameters. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.